Welcome to today's Friday Forum at the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Ralph Delarada. I've got the pleasure of presiding over the City Club this year. The City Club of Cleveland was originally established in 1912 to encourage new ideas and a free exchange of thought. We are the oldest continuous speaking forum in the United States, and we have a long and storied tradition of free speech, exercise through public debate, and open discussion. Today, the City Club is an organization where its diverse members participate in wide-ranging, high-quality forums, as well as enjoying a great deal of camaraderie. We're a civic center where the Cleveland community comes together each and every week to encounter and challenge important ideas. And lastly, we're an electronic forum open not only to our nation, but to the world as a whole. Continuing this week's theme on America's natural resources, and the environment, we have a speaker who is deeply involved in our nation's environmental well-being. Our guest is Francis Beinecke, the president of Natural Resources Defense Fund, or NRDC. This organization is one of the United States' most influential environmental action groups. The NRDC uses law, science, and the support of its 1.2 million members and online activists to advance comprehensive solutions to today's biggest environmental challenges. Ms. Beinecke has led a major strate strategic initiative at the NRDC that focuses on curbing global warming, investigating alternative energy sources, reviving the world's oceans, saving enda endangered wild places, stemming the tide of toxic chemicals, and also accelerating China's environmental cleanup. She, along with her organization, has recently been instrumental in blocking both private and governmental environmentally harmful programs in Congress, courtrooms, and other arenas. She also stresses the beneficial economic implications of fostering a green economy in our country. Ms. Beinecke and the NRDC are also heavily involved in the imminent debate over pollution curbing incentives, including adopting a cap, cap and trade, or tax approach to carbon emissions. Ms. Beinecke promotes the idea of a declining cap program over tax. She first became inspired to champion the environment after spending time in Wyoming and camping in the majestic Grand Teton mountain landscapes. She went on to study forestry and has spent her entire career at the NRDC, serving the organization for more than three decades and certainly serving all of us in this country. Prior to becoming the president of the NRDC in 2006, she served as its executive director for eight years and helped to double the organization's membership. As a matter of fact, she recruited me this morning, so I'm happy to be a new member. So <laughs> hope all of you will join as well. Prior to becoming the NRDC's president in 2006, she served as its executive director for eight years, and I'm sorry, I told you this already, and doubled the organization's membership, but deserves being remembered. She also played a key role on the NRDC's water and coastal program, where she protected coastal regions and fought to defend marine ecosystems from offshore energy industries. Beinecke has maintained a very close relationship with alma, her alma mater, Yale College, as we know, Cleveland is a big bastion of Eli's here, so nice to have you with us. This is part of the first graduating class at Yale that included women. She received both her bachelor's and master's degrees from Yale. She now co-chairs the Leadership Council of the Yale School of Forestry and participates on the Yale School of Management's advisory board. Beyond Yale, she serves on the boards of the World Resources Institute, the Energy Future Coalition, and Conservation International Center for Environmental Leadership in Business. She was also a former member of the Yale Corporation and previously served on the boards of the Wilderness Society, the China-U.S. Center for Sustainable Development, and the New York League of Conservation Voters. In addition to her prestigious board memberships, Ms. Beinecke has received several awards for environmental leadership, including the Rachel Carson Award for the National, from the National Audubon Society, the Robert Marshall Award from the Wilderness Society, and the Annual Conservation Award from the Adirondack Council. She is married to Paul Elston, with whom she co-founded the New York League of Conservation Voters. Together, they have three daughters, all of whom love the outdoors as much as their mother were told. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to introduce this distinguished leader who does such a great job in helping guard our precious environment. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Frances Beinecke to the City Club of Cleveland. Well, thank you all uh, very much, and thank you all for being here. When I found out I was coming today, I, and in fact, I had to come last night, I thought, this is going to be great. I'm going to go to the first opening game of the NBA Finals. But sadly, that was not to be. And in fact, I'm happy, because if that had been the case, you would have all been sleeping it over after the game, and I wouldn't have had an audience. So thank you for being here, but I'm very sad for all of you that you were not in the Finals, because I'm sure Leading up to it was incredibly exciting for all of Cleveland. Fortunately, I have a next door neighbor from Cleveland, so he was keeping me up to date and educated before I came out here. I'm particularly honored to be here at the City Club because it has such a rich history. And uh, to be standing at this podium, probably not the same one, but uh, both Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Delano Roosevelt had the opportunity to speak here, as I understand every presidential candidate has uh, in the past. And both of these presidents left an enormous environmental legacy to our country. TR was a man who, as we all know, loved and used nature with great, great enthusiasm and was our great uh, conservation leader in the early part of the 20th century and created the National Park Service as well as the Forest Service. And then FDR, a president who guided our nation through global adversity and a Great Depression. But in the face of these huge threats, he also created an energy transformation by creating the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Bonneville Power Authority, and a broad commitment to rural electrification across the country, which harnessed energy to improve safety, security, and renew the nation's economy. It's particularly fitting today, I think, to think about FDR's legacy and what he faced during his years as president, because as then, now our economy is in crisis, and as then, we need inspired leadership today to confront global threats to our security, to our climate, and to our economy. Today's challenges seem as daunting, and the need for bold solutions is equally powerful as it was then. The good news is that by investing in clean energy, we can get our economy moving again, increase our national security, and protect the environment. As your own Senator Sherrod Brown equally eloquently puts it, we can make Ohio the Silicon Valley of clean energy technologies. Already manufacturing cities such as Cleveland, Toledo, and Dayton are leading the way in advanced manufacturing for clean energy technology. We must build on this strong start in the years and months ahead, and we need to put the policies in place will allow that to go forward. Today I want to focus my remarks on three areas. What is this at stake due to the deterioration of our climate? What are the solutions to it? And what role can Ohio play? And what do we need to do at the national level? Make no mistake about it, and I'm sure you're well aware of this, global warming is a major threat to our health, safety, and well-being throughout the United States and the world. I believe it's the greatest moral challenge of our time and one that we need to take head on. The climate crisis gets more dangerous and stronger every day, and delay makes the solutions costlier and harder to realize. In fact, there's growing evidence that the, that the problem is far more serious than even the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicted just a few short years ago. Just last month, MIT released a new study updating a study they had issued in 2003 showing that the planet was warming at twice the rate of what they predicted just five years ago. With this trend comes the frightening possibilities that you already, I'm sure, have heard quite a bit about. 